We all know the war on Australia Day, all day, every day, rolling on until eventually Australia becomes a republic and then they'll have an excuse to change the day. But there are people who represent the country who don't think that they should be playing sport on a national day. Cricket is the current conversation. I personally don't think Australia Day should be celebrated on the 26th. Cricket Australia is facing a storm for scheduling a test match on Australia Day. I honestly believe it should be celebrated another day. Cricket Australia's decision to schedule a men's test match for Australia Day next year has created plenty of deba debate. Playing cricket Austra on the 26th, personally, and I can only speak for myself, I don't have an issue with it, but um, if First Nation um, people and if communities do, then I think we need to explore that and, and talk about it. Andrew Bogan is the man we talk to for common sense in the world of sport. He proudly represented uh, his team, but most importantly, his country in his uh, chosen sport of basketball. And he joins us now from the wonderful semi-man cave. It is uh, joined in Melbourne. Great man, how do you feel about these increasing athletes that are saying, sure, I'll represent my country, but not on its national day? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm one of those people that thinks... Um, you know, you, you could change the date, but I just don't think it's going to accomplish much. I think it's just going to just going to move on to the next thing. Um, but as far as athletes go, look, I've, I've played on Christmas Day. I've played on days that you know mean nothing to me. Days that mean something to me. I think when you're a professional sportsman or sportswoman, you play on days that aren't always comfortable for you. Um, this is a, obviously a tricky situation because a lot of people get political with it. But I think it should be play on. And I remember historically that's always been a pretty big. Um, calendar day for a sport in Australia and I think it should you know continue. What about the organisations because the organisations often fold to pressure we've seen it when it comes to sponsors and it's only going to take a couple of athletes and then being backed up by the uh, the lovey media for this to change as well what's your advice to the organisations about holding the line and going you know what it's our national day bugger it play. Well, it is an important day also for people, you know, that, that become citizens of, of Australia that migrate here and right just got a, friend, got, a, got a friend at the gym that um, is going through his test right now, you know, and studying for it and answering questions that he will never have to answer again in his life, which is comical in itself. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's just interesting. It's, it's always something. Um, but I, I think it's it should be play on you know you're, you're an athlete you're gonna play on days like I, I didn't have a Christmas day for a lot of a lot of uh, seasons in the NBA and it's uh, organizations are going to tell the line of what, what government tells them because government puts a lot of money into sport uh, but you can't tell me that every cricket player doesn't celebrate Australia Day well, that's ridiculous um it'd be interesting if there was an anonymous poll to see what the split would be because I'd I'll be willing to bet anonymously there'd be more than 50 percent that celebrate Australia Day to play cricket so shouldn't you go on the favor of the majority then uh, which brings us to the AFL today. They've matched what the Australian Olympic Committee has done in the National Rugby League as well, which is they are backing in the voice. The uh, outgoing CEO, geez, longest goodbye ever, had this to say today. We don't seek to lecture. We don't wade into every topic. But what those that are relevant, and there's a referendum coming up to our supporter base and to our people who work for the AFL, the people who are members of clubs, people who come to our games for our playing group, I think it's important that leadership actually says this is what we stand for, this is what we think. So here we go. Uh, the, they need to do it because they need to advocate. I'm assuming they're going to be advocating for uh, tax cuts and welfare increases and all the rest of it here. Um, I get what it's for. I get it's for sort of the corporate set. I get it's where the vibe is in places uh, like the front end of the plane. But how can they say that on the behalf of the millions of people who watch and support and therefore create the very business that is the AFL. Well, that's exactly right. And then at the start of your comment is, where, where do you draw the line? <laughs> is the thing going to go on where, you know, is, is the rail link going to get built in Melbourne? What's your position <laughs> AFL is? You know, it's, I'm, I'm a firm believer that sport should be sport. Um, if you want it on your own time, away from your sport, because you're a personality and you've got a platform, go for it. But during sport, like to, be, to lecture to people what, what you're doing. And once again, have you polled every player in the AFL anonymously so you can get a feel for the room? I doubt it. I, I I'll bet my bottom dollar there's people that would be no voters and people that will be yes voters. It's it's common sense. You, you go into a vote, there's people pro and for everything. You vote about the colour of grass, some people are going to tell you it's blue. That's just the world we live in, right? But to speak on behalf of your organisation for everybody, a little bit rich for me. Notice they didn't come out with a position on COVID lockdowns, which literally affected every single supporter, because their attitude was, certainly when it came to the grand final, we're going to get out of Melbourne when nobody else can leave the town. 
Oh, not only that, they were travelling unencumbered. Yeah. You know, don't forget that, Paul. Like, a lot of the sporting leagues were granted permits to go to training, granted permits to go to recovery sessions. They were on planes. They, they chartered planes. They were gone through airports. So, you know, you do the math. They have to, they have to toe the line for the government. And this is the same thing. You know, the government does put a lot of money into, especially the AFL. The AFL is basically a government arm for whatever party's in power. And they know that they need to toe the line with, with a lot of this stuff and whatever the, whatever the comments we need to make that are pro-government that, that they're pushing, we're going to push because we're going to lose our funding funding otherwise. It's clear as day. And it's it's uh, Sport Washing 101. Historically, you read up on that. And there's no, no one better than the AFL that is involved in sport washing, in my opinion. My oath. The Rogues Bogues podcast is beginning that. A whole lot more, including NBA finals talk and a lot of common sense. Andrew Bogart will talk to you again very soon.